Before we get started, can I have one lovely volunteer read me the section? Oh no, where is this? Uh, there it is. Can I have one lovely volunteer read me the background information of this lab? Noreen, go for it. Okay, there. Um, all organisms are dependent on a healthy carbon dioxide oxygen balance. Photosynthesis and cell cellular respiration are key processes in maintaining this balance. Plants, through the process of photosynthesis, use energy absorbed from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to produce carbohydrates and oxygen. Animals and plants, through the process of cellular respiration, use oxygen and sugars to produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy needed to maintain life. Perfect. So today we're going to use that information that we know about photosynthesis and cellular respiration to figure out how carbon dioxide cycles through a biological system. And that biological system we're working with today is an aquarium. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is read this problem section that's on my screen. Now, after I have read this problem section, I want you guys to answer question one on your document. So you, after I read this, you're going to summarize what's the purpose of this experiment? All right, so our problem today is you are setting up a small aquarium at home. Your aquarium, can aquarium kit contains a bag of snail eggs on an elodia plant. The instructions say to pour the contents, including the elodia, into the aquarium, but you're not sure why you need the elodia. Why might elodia plants be important in maintaining a healthy ecosystem? In this investigation, you will use snails and elodia to explore a biological system. You will form a hypothesis about the relationship between snails and elodia, and then design an experiment to test your hypothesis. All right, so Miles, Elodia is a plant, okay? Now using that information, I want you guys to answer question one. Summarize, what are we going to be doing today in this experiment based on this problem? Oh, and before we get started, as you're typing your answers, please, if possible, write those answers in a different color than black. So change the font color to red or blue or purple, um, just so it's easier for me to grade. Take about 30 seconds to answer question number one. Think about what you know about cellular respiration and photosynthesis. Take about 10 more seconds to answer question number one. All right. Explore the lab. Now we're going to move on to the background question, okay? All organisms are- <laughs> I'm trying to stop it as quickly as I can. All right, so I'm gonna read the background information and then you guys are going to use this information to answer question number two. So the background information tells us that all organisms are dependent on a healthy carbon dioxide and oxygen balance. Photosynthesis and cellular respiration are key processes in maintaining this balance. Plants, through the process of photosynthesis, use energy absorbed from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to produce carbohydrates and oxygen. Animals and plants, through the process of cellular respiration, use oxygen and sugars to produce carbon dioxide, water, and the energy needed to maintain life. So now I want you guys to use this background information to answer question number two. Based on your knowledge of biology, why might the snail aquarium kit include the Elodia plant? Write your prediction below. So go ahead and answer question number two. We know that Elodia is a plant. Why does our aquarium need it? So think about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Right, so answer questions one and two. Take about one more minute.
All right. Now, can I have one volunteer tell me what did you write for number two? What was your answer? Um. Oh, did you want us to sort of um, raise our hands? Samaya, you can go for it. <laughs> I said, um, since the elodia is a plant and photosynthesis is a process that creates food, the snail aquarium includes the elodia for the products that come out of photosynthesis so that the snails will be able to um, perform cellular respiration. Perfect. What do the plants produce that the snails need for cellular respiration? Food. And? Glucose. And um, carbon oxygen. dioxide. Oh. I mean, oxygen. Oxygen, Ooh. right? <laughs> good job. All right, so as long as you said something along those lines, you're good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to flip through- Explore the lab. We're going to flip through each of the materials that we're going to be using for this lab. So as I flip through these, you're going to write down the purpose of each, each material. Um, so as soon as I click on these, it'll actually tell you the purpose. You just need to write down whatever you see pop up on the screen. So the first material we're going to use today is a beaker of bromthymol blue solution. Okay, now bromthymol blue beaker of is a chemical indicator used to test for the presence of carbon dioxide. So I want you guys to write that down. This is a chemical indicator used to test for the presence of CO2. Okay, and this beaker is, or this solution in the beaker is green because there's already some carbon dioxide present in this solution. Now, can someone remind me, what is an indicator? What does that word mean? What is an indicator? So Chris- the sign that something is here. Say that one more time. Sign that something is present. Yeah, so we're using this chemical indicator to determine if something is present. And in this case, we're trying to determine if carbon dioxide is present. Now, Crystal had a good question. She said, I thought that carbon dioxide was invisible. And you're right. So this indicator has already changed colors because there's carbon dioxide present. Does that make sense? So the bromthymol blue solution has turned green. That's why it's a little bit colored. All right, next material we're going to use is the pond, pond snails. snails. We said that in unison. Um, pond snails have lungs which means that they can breathe in or out of the water. That's all you need to write for our pond snails today. Now, can someone remind me what process do pond snails utilize that's relevant to today's lesson? What process do pond Value snails- yeah, they use cellular respiration. So I would write that as well. All right, next up, our next material is the Elodia, Elodia. plant. Elodia. So Elodia is an aquatic plant, which means it lives in the water. Now, what process or processes do Elodia plants utilize? Photosynthesis. And? Cellular respiration. Yeah, so they oh. use both photosynthesis and cellular respiration. All right, our next material is test, test tubes. tubes. You we're going to use these test tubes to hold the snails and Elodia in our experiment. All right, next up, we're going to be using a grow light today. Grow light. Use okay, we're going to use this grow light to simulate light conditions. Now, why might we need light in today's experiment? What is light necessary for? Light is necessary for photosynthesis. Beautiful. So we're going to use this grow light to basically simulate a pretend sun. Would it work the same as the regular, like as regular sunlight? It does because this grow light is going to be emitting similar like UV rays that the sun does. 
Um, if it was just like a fluorescent light, if you put it underneath a regular lamp, it wouldn't work. But because this grow light is specifically made to shoot out the same light as sunlight, it does. Oh, okay. All right, now we're actually not going to use this material today, but this test tube rack test cover tube rack co would be used to simulate dark conditions. So if we didn't want any sunlight to reach these plants, we would use the test tube rack cover. Yeah, Stella's got it, it has UVB rays. All right, test tube rack covers um, used to simulate dark conditions. Yeah, so Hayden, we're gonna put snails in the test tubes today, but they'll they'll be all right. <laughs> Wait, you have snails with you right now? Austin, what do you think the answer to that is? No, what? You, could you keep snails in like your back pocket or something? Yeah, don't you keep what? snails in your back pocket? <laughs> Crystal, how do I mute the audio? Where do I do that? Um, if you're on Windows, it's like, you know, your volume mixer. Oh, wait, yeah, no. I'm, I'm on a, a Mac, though. Oh, then I don't know how to do that. Well, we tried. Maybe, well, I don't want to click on help. It'll exit out. We'll just suffer together. All right. The next material we're going to use. Carbon dioxide, oxygen. Oh, no is the carbon dioxide and oxygen cycle poster. So we're going to use this diagram to help us write our hypothesis because this shows us how carbon dioxide and oxygen cycle through an ecosystem. So we see carbon dioxide leaving the mouth of this ramp hamster rodent um, and then oxygen being released by this plant. Okay, so it creates this loop um, where oxygen and carbon dioxide are cycled throughout an ecosystem. Miles, I'm worried that if I turn the volume down, you guys won't be able to hear me or I won't be able to hear you. <laughs> Mohammed's like, that's not a problem, sounds good. <laughs> I think we'll be okay. All right, and the final material we're going to use today is this color key over color here. Key. Use the so the color key we're going to use alongside our bromthymol blue solution to determine the level of CO2 in a solution. So it's kind of like the color key that we use for our pH solutions. We're going to compare the color of that solution to our key to determine what or the amount of CO2 that's present in our solutions. All right, take about 10 more seconds to write those materials down. And then we'll move on. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is set up our experiment. Um, and I've actually already set up these conditions for you in your in your document. Okay, so today our dependent variable is going to be the level of CO2 in the test tube. So this is what we are measuring. Right? Our independent variable is the number of snails in each test tube. This is what we're changing or manipulating. And our control group is going to be the test tube with no snails and no Elodia plants. Now, can someone remind me, what's the importance of the control group? Why do we need that? As a base. Yeah, and we're going to use that to compare our conditions, to compare our results to. Okay. So we're going to be using four test tubes today. So I'm going to scroll down here. We're going to use four test tubes. In test tube one, we're going to include only the bromthymol blue solution. In test tube two, we're going to be using 
sorry, I, I'll promise I'll slow down, but this should all be written on your page. So you don't need to be typing anything just yet. Our test tube two is going to include zero snails and one plant. Test tube three has one snail and one plant. And test tube four has two snails and one plant. And we're going to be placing that test tube under the grow light today. Okay, so using this setup information, I want us to take some time to write a hypothesis. So our independent variable is the amount of snails in each test tube, and we're measuring the amount of CO2 in each test tube. So what is our hypothesis? We need to hypothesize how carbon dioxide will cycle in aquarium water through snails and elodia. So I've given you the first part of that sentence. If I add a snail and elodia to a test tube with bromthymol blue, then what will happen? So I want you guys to use the information that you know about carbon dioxide and oxygen production and write a hypothesis for how carbon dioxide will cycle through this ecosystem. Take about one minute to write that hypothesis in question number four. Thirty more seconds to write your hypothesis. How will carbon dioxide cycle through this aquarium water when we have snails and elodia present? All right. Now, can I have one lovely volunteer tell me what's your hypothesis for this experiment? What do you think is going to happen with CO2 production in this aquarium? Karen, go for it. If I add if I add a snail and a lodia to the test tube with the brothymol blue, then there will be a higher concentration of CO2. Perfect. And why did you say that? Because there's the snails like perform cellular respiration. They take in the oxygen and breathe out the carbon dioxide. So if there's okay. more snails, then yeah. Yeah. All right. Can I have one more volunteer? What was your hypothesis? Um, I said that the Aloda plant will use the CO2 to perform photosynthesis. And when photosynthesis is done, it will be turned into oxygen, which will then be used by the snails to perform cellular respiration, releasing carbon dioxide. And this process will go on in a loop. Oh, you guys are getting onto me for typing fast. How about Samaya talking fast? Tell me that one more time and then okay, let I'm them sorry. Write it You're good. The Aloda plant will use CO2 to perform photosynthesis. And then when photosynthesis is done, it will be turned into oxygen, which should then be used by the snails to perform cellular respiration, releasing carbon dioxide. And this process will go on in a loop. Perfect. All right, so here we've got two possible hypotheses. Remember that your hypothesis does not have to be correct. This is just your educated guess about what's going to happen. Um, in this experiment. So as long as you have a hypothesis written, you're good. All right. 
Mohammed says the amount of carbon dioxide won't change. All right, that's another one. Let's let's write that one down as well. All right, so as long as you have some sort of hypothesis down, you're good. Now, I want you guys to answer question number five. How are we going to use our lab materials to measure the dependent variable? So our dependent variable here was the amount of CO2 present. How are we going to measure that? Let me get one lovely volunteer to answer question number five. How are we going to measure the amount of CO2 present? The chemical indicator? The yeah. Um, thymol solution. <laughs> Perfect. So we're going to use the brom thymol blue solution. I'm just gonna write BTB. Okay, so we're gonna use that indicator to determine the presence of CO2. And what are we going to use to figure out how much CO2 is present? Think about this over here in the bottom right corner. The color key? Yeah, so we're going to use the color key. Determine the amount present. Right. Now, I'm going to go over to the data tab. Um, I, you guys have got the same data table on your worksheet. This is where we're going to fill out the contents of each of our um, test tubes, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is actually well, quick procedure. Open the lab notebook and we did that. Open the lab notebook and design an experiment to test. Shut up. <laughs> um, all right, I think I actually have to copy this into our test tubes. It's talking on my end and it's giving me heart attack. Be quiet. I'm so sorry. All right, guys, hold on. I've got to copy and paste this into our data table. It should be all oh. why won't it let me go to three what is three um the next step it won't let me set up our experiment did i forget to fill something out There we go. Okay. Begin your experiment by drag. So now we're actually going to set up this experiment. So this is where your data table is going to come in, guys. OK, so in this experiment, we're using four test tubes. So I'm going to drag four test tubes over here. And we're going to add bromthymol solution to each of them, because that is our indicator. Now, what are our contents for test tube one? Only the, only the blue solution, right? So we're actually done with test tube one, but what should we add to test tube two? Add snail. Well, the voice just told you. <laughs> what should we add to test tube, test tube two? One plant. Yes, you're exactly right. So one plant. What about test tube three? One snail and one, one snail. plant. Beautiful, one snail and one plant. And then what about the fourth test tube? Two snails and one plant. Perfect, so we're adding two snails and one plant. Now in your data table, I want you guys to fill in the contents of each of those test tubes and the starting color of each of them. So for the first test tube, we only have our bromthymol blue solution. For the second test tube, we have our bromthymol blue and one plant, one elodia. For our third, we have bromthymol blue, one snail, and one elodia. 
Miles says the snails are gonna drown. No, they're fine. They can breathe. They can breathe in water. Yeah, they're fine. All right, and our fourth test tube is brown thymol blue, two snails, and one elodia. And the starting color for each of these is green. So that means that a medium amount of CO2 is present in each of these test tubes. Now using this key, we're going to then predict what the end color is going to be for each. So using this key, we see that if no carbon dioxide is present in our test tube, the ending color will be blue. If a medium amount of CO2 is present, the test tube will be green. And if a high amount of CO2 is present, the color will be yellow. Okay, so use that information to predict what color do you think we'll see in each of these test tubes. Once again, your prediction does not have to be correct. We're just making a guess. All right, now Double let's check do your this. setup, then click add. We're going to add the stoppers to our test tubes. We're going to place them underneath the light, and we're going to see what happens. All right, so when I remove my test tubes from the light, observe the change in color. I want you guys to record those results. So, what is the ending color for each test tube? Well, test tube one is green, test tube two is blue, test tube three is green, and test tube four is yellow. So write that down in your data table. Hold on, I don't get it. Hold on just a second, Omar, okay, then we'll talk about it. So go ahead and write these results down. So we see that there is a medium amount of CO2 present in test tube one, no CO2 present in test tube two, a medium amount of CO2 present in test tube three, and a high amount of CO2 present in test tube four. Right, so can I have one volunteer explain to me, what does this mean? Explain these results to me. Ariana, go for it. All right, Omar, this one's for you. Um, test tube one, the ending color was green, which means there was a medium amount of carbon um, dioxide. Uh, test tube two had blue, which meant it was no carbon dioxide. Test tube three was green, meaning there was a medium, medium amount, and test tube four had yellow, which meant it was a large amount. And why does this make sense? So what do we know about CO2 production and maybe oxygen production as well that makes sense about this? Omar, I see your hands up. Well, um, the thing that I don't get is why in test tube one, it's only BTB solution. That's our control group. So that's what we're comparing. Yeah, I know, I know, but if the set if it says down below, if no carbon dioxide is present in your test tube, it will be a blue color. Mm -hmm. So shouldn't it be blue because there's no snails, there's no plants, there isn't anything. Why is it green? Because what was our original starting color? It was green. Right. So with our control group, we shouldn't see a change. Oh really? Yeah. So. If you see with your control group, that should be your baseline data. There should be no change um, because that's what you're comparing your results to. So this just means that in the air or in that solution, there was already some CO2 present. Now we put a cap on top of that test tube, right? Which means that no air can get in or out. So whatever was present at the, be at the beginning is going to be present at the end in that control group. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So um, for, the second test tube, is it because the plant is taking more carbon dioxide? Yeah, the plant's taking in carbon dioxide and producing what? 
oxygen and glucose. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks you. Of course. All right, guys. So these are your results. Make sure you have your data table completed because for homework, you guys are going to be completing questions two through seven on your own. So use the information, <laughs> Crystal, use the information that we just talked about, use the information that you know based on cellular respiration and photosynthesis and answer questions two through seven tonight. Okay, if you have any questions about that, please send me a message on Remind, but you have all of the data that you need to complete this lab. All right, what questions do you have for me? <laughs> Hayden says gasp. <laughs> All right, so you have two things due tomorrow morning. What are those two things? This, this lab and then the part two for, for the, the, uh, the photosynthesis thingy. Perfect, so you'll need to finish this lab tonight before tomorrow morning, um, as well as that photosynthesis project that you should have gotten a pretty good head start on these past few days. All right, now, if you don't have any other questions for me, head out and go to your next class and have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, Ms. Collins. Have, have, have a good day. Have a good day. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Have a good day. Have a good day. Bye. Maya, see ya. Bye, Ms. Bye. See ya.